for this demonstration, I'm just going to do a quick demo of reading in a data file, doing a regression analysis, and outputting the results to an Excel file. So we're going to analyze the data file, which has smoking rates and lung cancer deaths uh, per 100,000 people age adjusted in Canada. And we'll use this data to see if there is any sort of a statistical relationship between smoking rates and lung cancer deaths in Canada. So we're going to set up our null hypothesis, which is that there is no link between smoking rates and lung cancer deaths. And if the stats show that there, that our P greater than T value is 5% uh, or less, that'll give us enough evidence to reject our null hypothesis. We can accept the alternate, which says there is a relationship for this population between smoking rates and lung cancer deaths. And then with the regression model that we build, we could actually do some, depending on our adjusted R squared value, we could perhaps do some predictions and say for per this level of percentage of smokers, what impact does that have on predicted smoking rates? And just for full disclosure, this data file uh, has been sourced from uh, uh, Rosner and Ritchie and Hammond, uh, Tariq, uh, Buchhalter, Reinard, and Douglas. So this is a mashup data file. Uh, if you take the course, you might find that this data file will be familiar at that time. Uh, we tend to, this is a favorite of mine to uh, kind of dip your toes into the data science water. So this is the data file that we'll be working with. It's uh, the data source, the data sources are all public. It is a mashup. Without further ado, time to write some code. So I'm going to jump over into my environment of choice and the environment of choice of this course, which is the spider programming environment, the spider integrated development environment, IDE. If you ever hear somebody say the term programming IDE, IDE stands for integrated development environment. So the IDE that we use for this course is spider. The reason I like spider, well, let me take you through a quick tour of this. What are we doing in this file right now? So in this Python code that I've written, first what we're doing is bringing in a couple of packages. The packages we're bringing in are the pandas package, the stats models package, and a package called OS. I'll talk about OS at the end. What are these packages? These are like Lego bricks to build up the capabilities of Python. Because Python is a general purpose programming language, it doesn't really have any statistical analysis functions built into it. So that's where pandas and stats models come in. These are the libraries that give Python the functions to run these statistical analyses. Pandas is how we will read and manipulate our data files. And then stats models is how we will build and run our regression models. So first we bring in our libraries. Good practice is to put your library imports at the very top. And then I'm going to read in my data file, my table one smoking versus cancer CSV file from the disk and read it into a named spot in memory. This is called a variable. And this variable name is going to have the name smoking data. On my keyboard, I'm going to press the F5 key. I could also hit the run key up here. This is going to run my Python file. Now I've read in the CSV file from my computer's hard disk into the computer's memory. It's stored in this name slot called smoking data. Here's the reason I like spider so much. Up here at the top right, I get what is called the variable explorer. This allows me to preview what is stored inside of these variables that I create or declare. Anytime you hear me say declare a variable, same uh, means the same thing as creating a variable. It's a data frame, which you can think of as a table like structure. So we have columns that have names and we have rows that contain data. It is 18 rows tall and five columns wide. And my columns are year, smokers, smokers male, smokers female, age adjusted lung cancer, 100,000. Then I can double click on the name of this variable in the variable explorer and bring up a preview window. So with just a couple of lines of code, we can already do some basic data exploration. So all of my data is in numeric format. 
Spider has applied some coloring to my data so I can see maximum to minimum values. So we start out at 44, uh, 44 lung cancer deaths per 100,000, all the way down to 33 by the year 2011. So this is another reason that I like Spider is I get this variable explorer. So instead of having to print out all of my results down to the text-based console down here, I can just explore my variables from up here. So we've read in our data file into the data frame, our table-like structure. Now we're not just limited to, uh, to reading in our data file. If we want to do some more data exploration, we can also ask pandas to print out our summary statistics by using the print function and the describe function on our data frame. Now, what the heck are functions? Functions are wrapped up pieces of code that do something for us. For example, this print function prints out some text or a variable or something down to our console down here. And then this describe function gives us back in our kit, in this case, it will give us back the summary statistics for our data frame. So if I run this code again, you'll see that we read in our variable, we read in our data frame into smoking data. And then down here in the console, I have the summary stats for each of the variables in my data frame. I could also do the following. I could say, I could create a new variable called summary data frame equals smoking data dot describe. And then if I run this, I now have a second variable called summary data frame, eight rows tall, five columns wide. And I have summary stats for each of these, uh, each of the columns in my original smoking data data frame. So I've got 18 records in each uh, column. Uh, I've got the mean for each of these for year, mean is not meaningful, but say for smokers, male, female, and age-adjusted lung cancer deaths, they are meaningful. My standard deviation, my minimum, my percentiles, and my maximum for each of the data sets. So I can either do print my, dis my uh, summary statistics, or I can take my summary statistics and put them in another variable. Now, we've done a little bit of data exploration. Now it is time to build up our OLS regression model. Yes, we're at that point in the demo already. Again, this is why I love Python so much is we can do this quite fast. So what I'm gonna do is build an OLS regression model to see if there's a relationship between smoking rates and lung cancer deaths in Canada. After we build this regression model, we're going to print out the results and we're going to be looking for the P greater than T value. And we're going to see if it's significant at the 5% level or better. If it is, that gives us enough evidence to reject our null hypothesis that there is no relationship between smoking and lung cancer rates. And that means we can accept the alternate, which there is a relationship. So first we'll build up our OLS regression model to see if there's a relationship between smoking rates and lung cancer rates. So what's going on in this code sample? So I'm building up, I'm storing in a variable called lung cancer model, my OLS regression model. So I'm saying use my stats model formula library. I want to build an OLS regression. The first parameter I'm passing to the OLS function. And parameter is basically a input that we give to a function to say, uh, it's think about on your microwave if you've got a popcorn button or if you've got a defrost button. Usually your microwave will ask you for the number of pounds or the number of ounces or the number of grams of, a, of whatever it is you're defrosting. That is a parameter to the defrost function on your microwave. OLS takes two parameters here, which is the formula that we're using uh, that we want to use for our regression, and then the data source of our regression. So our formula, we're going to try and predict age-adjusted lung cancer deaths by our, by our independent variable smokers. And the data that we're using, the source data set, is our data frame, smoking data. And then after that, we do dot fit to say to uh, stats model, build this regression. And if we run this code, it looks like nothing happened. Although we do have this new variable called lung cancer model, and it's of type regression results wrapper. So if we want to write out 
So we've built our regression, we've run it, we actually have a regression model, but now we need to output the results. So let's output those results. The way we're going to do that, again, we're gonna call the print function and we're gonna print lung cancer model dot summary. That will print out the summary of, that'll print out our, uh, the results of our regression analysis to the console in the lower right. And if we run this code, here we are. We have our OLS regression results. First thing I always like to look at is the adjusted R squared, 0.858. Not bad, not a bad model fit here. But let's take a look at P greater than T for our smokers variable. So this, the way that we represent percentages in Python is uh, zero equals zero percent and 1.0 equals 100%. So we have a P greater than T of 0 0.000. In reality, this is a very, very small number. This is significant at the 5% level. So now we have evidence to reject, we have sufficient evidence to reject our null hypothesis and we can accept the alternate, which tells us that in this population sample, it appears that there is a relationship between smoking rates and lung cancer deaths age adjusted in Canada. And in particular, we can build up our model, which is we see we have an intercept of 26.78 lung cancer deaths. So if if, uh, if smoking rate equals zero, we would expect to see about 26.78 lung cancer deaths. And based on our model, we can say that as uh, as as smoking rates increase by say one unit, uh, we should expect to see lung cancer deaths increase by 0.57 per hundred thousand people age adjusted. We have this text-based output, and that's fine. That's not bad. We could take this and copy it into another program and maybe make it a little bit more presentable, or you could take some of these statistics, you know, cherry pick the adjusted R square, the number of observations, your coefficient. You could build that up in, say, Microsoft Word or, or uh, another word processing program or make a presentation about it. But we can also write these summary findings out to a CSV file, and then we can open that CSV file in Excel. Here's how we do that. This is where this import OS will come in. What we're going to do is take these regression results, write them out to a CSV file, and then we'll ask the computer, open that CSV file in Excel for me, please. The way we do that is we open model summary.csv for writing. So we do with open model summary.csv comma W to say, we're gonna to write to a file. And then we do F dot write, our lung cancer model dot summary dot as CSV. This will transform the summary statistics or the summary data frame uh, that we get from, uh, from stats models uh, into a CSV file. And then we do OS dot system model summary dot CSV. That will trigger our computer to open this file that we've just created. If we run this code, Microsoft Excel pops up as if like magic. And here we go, we can turn this into, we can now, we now have a, what we call a pretty printed output with our coefficient, our standard error. And this is where we can get into uh, say some neat, uh, this is where we can get into a combination of say Microsoft Excel and Python. So I've now got my regression output in Excel. We could cr come into Excel and create a quick formula and say, I'm gonna use cell I12 here as say uh, the number of uh, the percentage of uh, smokers. So I'm gonna say, you know, let's do 28. Let's say the smoking rate is 28%. Now I could say, all right, I'm gonna build up a formula and say B12 plus uh, the smoking rate times, or the smokers coefficient times my value in I. So if I equals 28, we would expect to see for 28% smokers, we would expect to see 43 uh, lung cancer deaths per 100,000 people. We could jump back over into Python here, take a quick look at our data frame. And if we see, uh, and if we take a look at the smoking rates, if I jump between the two here, so at 28%, uh, let's see here, we have a number between 30 and 26 here. So we would expect to see 40, somewhere around 43 lung cancer deaths. Uh, 43 lung cancer deaths per 100,000 people. And indeed we get 43.01. So our model's not bad in terms of predictions, is it? We could also say plug in 18% smoker rate. And look at that, 37.21, 43.01, 43.01. 
37.50. Our regression model fits, our regression fits the data quite well. So this is where we can get into the fun of combining the output of Python with Excel to build up, say, interactive dashboards or interactive applications that you could give to, say, senior management so that they could do some data exploration on their own as well. And that's the demo. That's it. So this is a very quick introduction to running an OLS regression using Python. We're just scratching the surface as to what we cover in this course. Further, more material that we cover in this course, we cover how to filter data using Python. We'll actually read in data sets with many hundreds of rows and filter down to just the ones that we need. We'll do some data cleaning. So one of the most common tasks that we use Python for is cleaning up data. So if you go to Statistics Canada, uh, great data repository, every now and then you may see that certain uh, records of data might have a dash or might have a note saying that this data was suppressed uh, due to privacy concerns or the data was not available for a given population. If you export that data to CSV, you'll need to clean up that data. So substitute the note for a not a number. So this is a very common use of uh, Python is to do data cleaning. We'll also combine multiple data files together. So if we have, say, uh, population counts, you know, a common one would be, say, take population counts and, you know, take education level. We've got two separate data files. How do we combine the two into one? How do we do all of this at the same time? It's very rare that you get a data file that is as pristine and ready to be imported as this one is. Now, this one is generated for purposes of of easing into the data science process. But we get into a lot more advanced techniques in the course. And then, of course, we also look at how to create plots using Python. So you can, say, export data and create plots in Excel or Numbers or your program of choice. It is also possible to create some basic plots using Python as well. And we cover how to do that. So we've just scratched the surface as to what we can do with Python. Uh, this webinar is not meant to be an exhaustive webinar. It's meant to show that, hey, Python's not that scary. D learning how to write Python code, you know, if you've never done it before, the Python is a great language to get your feet wet. And uh, we try to go at a good pace in this course. So.